So I am first and foremost a um, animal behaviorist. So uh, that's what I like to work with. Um, I should be working on louse behavior, but I'm, I'm not. Um, sorry about that. So the project, um, I wanted, this is quite a long time ago, actually, it was in 2014 I started, I think. Um, I wanted to find out if uh, you could classify lump fish into different personalities. Um, I find the uh, personality fascinating, and so I wanted to see if there are consistent behavioral traits um, that you can class lump fish into, whether any of these traits correlate or syndromes, um, and do any of these syndromes uh, correspond to louse cleaning behavior. So what I did was I took 200 lumpfish, um, pit tagged them, measured them, um, and then I put them through loads of behavioral trials. Um, and then after I did that, I um, put them in some tanks with salmon that had been infected with lice. And um, after a while, I sampled their stomachs to find out if they'd eaten any lice. The tests were things like general activity, acclimatization to a novel environment, aggression, boldness, the kind of things that if, if you're into personality, you, you know about. So lumpfish are super active. Um, uh, I tested each fish three times, so there's about 600 samples here. Um, this is the bar for no activity at all. Um, yeah. These, these are the ones that actually did something. These, these guys over here, they, they moved around all of the time. Um, apparently, though, the activity levels are repeatable. So each of the fish, you know, in the three tests, they, the ones that were active seem to have been active every time, whereas the inactive ones were not. So that's pretty nice. It means that this is a consistent behavior um, that you can kind of classify on fish into. There's all of the inactive ones and then some that actually move around. Um, and then I measured all of those things um, and did a PCA. And as you can see, um, there's not a lot of the variation that is explained uh, in the first two principal components, but I am going to stick to those anyway. Um, and then I drew these circles for um, the activity levels, I classed them into never moving and then moving a little bit and the ones that actually move around. And they seem to kind of fall on, a, on a, the PC1 scale a little bit. Um, it's kind of faint, but the, the palest ones over here and then a little bit darker and then the darkest ones over here. Um, and Usually when you talk about personality, you talk about proactive and reactive fish. And um, the way I read the behaviors that I can see on this kind of axis, um, basically the more active fish are the proactive ones, the ones that actually respond actively to a novel object or um, a mirror or whatever you put into their tank. Uh, whereas a lot of the other fish will either ignore the thing or Freeze. It's very difficult to tell the difference between a really scared frozen lumpfish and one that doesn't care. Um. <laughs> anyway, so we have on the PC1, we have proactive, reactive, kind of the baseline activity and the various active responses to things. And then we have a PC1 that looks like it could be shy, bold. There is, you know, not investigating a novel object and not interacting with the mirror a lot of fleeing behavior seen, uh, rather than just kind of calm swimming. But it's only 36% of the, the variation, um, which means that it's probably not a good idea to try and group lumpfish behaviors together. If you look at louse consumption, the circles represent, uh, oh yeah, this is written in fairy, sorry. So the J stands for yes and the N stands for no. Um, so it's they've eaten lice or they've not eaten lice. And the circles completely overlap. Doesn't seem to be any of the behaviors that corresponds to um, the last consumption. I also did 
linear models to just check the individual behaviors against louse consumption and no. So basically, you can't really predict whether a lungfish is going to eat lice from the measured behaviors. Thank you.